right, welcome to another episode of Value Pursuit. This is episode 10. Very exciting episode for Tyler and myself. Tyler, how are we doing? I'm doing excellent. We have another uh, two guests on today, special, something uh, first time that we've had this, but uh, business owners here and special friends of mine, Evelyn and Vince, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to chat with us. Yeah. Happy to have you guys. Yeah, You're thank welcome. you for having us. Uh, so we just want to get into here on Valued Pursuit, how we usually do, just a brief overview of your guys' kind of origin story, so to speak. So we'll let Evelyn go first, like an elevator pitch that Patrick always says, just if you were in the elevator with somebody real quick, you know, where you came from, like kind of your childhood story to present day. So I grew up in Brazil. I lived there for 25 years. I just moved here a couple years ago. Um grew up and to loving food beaches uh crossfit and that's what brought me here yeah we'll awesome. got you to stay here He's got me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's so cool i know patrick's face lights up when he hears crossfit he's a big crossfit guy but <laughs> yeah. i just it's I, it's it's just remarkable like <laughs> I'm done with that life. It's too too hard. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so that's really cool. So um, what got you into, so you were in Brazil for 25 years. That's awesome. So to come here and like be a hustler and like make a name for yourself is like really impressive. Um, what what got you into, so like you guys own Primal Bowls. I don't think I said that. You guys are the owner of Primal Bowls in Westchester County, New York. Plug for you guys there in Yorktown Heights awesome cafe of uh, superfoods, you know, different coffees, um, organic bowls and things of that sort. So like what got you into wanting to do that? And then we can kind of get into events kind of where you came from your background too. Go ahead, man. So, so what got us into that was we were, uh, it's funny. It's an interesting story actually. So this was right around COVID, right? So I think it, it just had hit you know, and we were coming up with ideas for businesses, basically, where we're just stuck inside, right? And Evelyn was working as a, a nanny at the time. And, you know, I, in my mind, I didn't want her doing that. She didn't want to do it. Right. So we were, we had friends within the, you know, who are all business owners, right? So in a way, like, that was motive. That was a motivator in one on one aspect. And then the other the second part was playing, what the hell do we do? We come up with an idea. Prior to COVID, Evelyn took us to uh, an acai place. And I, I've i heard of it, but I didn't really know what exactly it was. And then she kind of delved into the background of what it was, right? And actually the history behind it and like how it's everywhere in Rio. Everyone knows what it is. Here, it's kind of boutique, right? At least at the time, it's grown in popularity. And uh, we said, let's just come up with a business idea, right? So we we started putting together a business plan uh we started looking for suppliers like things like that let's just get some acai come up with a few ideas right and we did it in our apartment we overstuffed our refrigerator and a, we got a, a freezer that took up half our single bedroom apartment just to put these acai buckets in we created this website which i could get into a little later we used uh we cheaped out on it and we used uh <laughs> Use the a not so oh, reputable Upwork. company. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Upwork. It's typically pretty good, but this, these guys you had to watch out for. And we started basically created the delivery business with it, right? So like, um, we started selling the bowls. Like, uh, we maybe we had one or two customers a day during the peak of COVID. It started to turn into like twenty, thirty. And we were driving all over the place, taking turns, delivering it. People were like, Venom on this was cool. Like, you know, it's like we could really do this, right? So it turned into like a little side hustle, right? And then next thing you know, we're in a store and we have a full- I had to quit my job. Full business. She had to quit her job. And now we're doing it. Uh, Now we're doing it full time, man. Wow. So bring us, so we heard a little bit from everyone. Vince, pleasure to have it on. It's wonderful to to to- you know, speak to both of you today and let, let, let the, our audience and, and just us hear your story. So bring us up to, you, you were working. So bring us up to that point. You're now working. Where did you, you know, where did you come from? How did you get to that point? 
Yeah. So, I mean, just the background of me, I mean, I mm-hmm. grew up in this area and the, the Hudson Valley, for the most part, you know, small town, suburbia, typical, uh, typical out, right outside of the city. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. Right. <laughs> Just from either Irish, Italian immigrants making their way up to making their way up to the suburbs, right? Um, so played sports growing up, you know, good family, good background. My um my dad sort of instilled a lot of discipline in me, especially around like fitness. I mean, from geez, man, I I probably around nine or ten, it was like, all right we're going to the gym every day. We're making this happen. Right. So like it was always instilled in my lifestyle. Right. He was always a disciplinarian around like food and diet and his health specifically around that. Right. So that kind of always led me to be within that lifestyle and that journey. Right. And then as I got older, I got a sales job. Right. Which is, again, I feel like for my growth as, as part as that, as far as that goes, right. It helped me, with business because it's again you're not truly an entrepreneur you're not fully on your own but all the responsibility lies on you right if you fail it's on you right so like that has always given me that like kind of hustler mentality and it only helped me to actually start this business so i still work i work for uh i work for a company i'll keep it out remain nameless uh but i do sales for them and i do uh you know, everyone and I just manage primal bowls on that as well. So it's nonstop, but it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Now with, I just want to, with acai. So I actually wrote a chapter. It's like a year and a half ago for um, a medical supplement textbook. That's going to be coming out. Like well, it's, it's been accepted. We're just waiting for it to publish. So I know quite a bit about acai. I, I researched the heck out of it for this one specific chapter. Can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, you, you hear these bowls and acai. I mean, it is one of the greatest super fruits that I've ever read about. And it's a very interesting fruit because because of the fatty acids inside of it, it, you cannot essentially in the United States, you can't really buy fresh acai because it goes bad like within a day or two. So can you talk to us a little bit about acai, obviously coming from Brazil and things like that? Uh, can, can you just talk to us a little about like why acai and then where that then comes into what's the sort of premise behind, you know, it's primal bowls. So, Take us from there. So, um, acai comes from the Amazon. So if you go to the north of Brazil, you will see acai everywhere in like different forms, just like we do here in like a bowl with fruits, but also they do as part of their like regular meals, like rice, beans, they would do rice and acai and fish. So there are like different ways to have it. They would do like smoothies with it. I never seen a person eating like the actual fruit, like just the acai. I don't know if it's good that way, but it's just everywhere. Little kids would do, uh, the older people would do, beach goer will do, eat acai. It's just crazy. It's just everywhere. And it's just like so good for you. It's full of uh, antioxidants, little sugar here and there depending how you do it. But it, I tried, I actually tried the acai as like part of my meal, like rice and acai, and I hated <laughs> it was so bad because I'm not used to it. But um, it's just, it's a super food. It's, it is. Yeah, I noticed like when we were out there too, a lot of, um, a lot of surfers would eat it like pre, you know, session. Um, it's big in the jujitsu community out there too, almost like uh, they take it as like a natural energy drink. You know, it does, it does work. I've had it, you know, it's not my proudest moment, but I've tried it after having a hangover <laughs> one day <laughs> and it, it boosted me right back up. I think it is a, an excellent food. Like I said, antioxidants in it, um, just pure natural energy. And it's funny. We went to Brazil. We were in Rio not too long ago and the way they serve it, it is, it is pure, right? And it's raw, organic form. And like you said, it does go back quick. 
and it is it is different but they're everywhere out there it's a funny story um it is different without like any kind of like fruits or granola whatever it may be that they put in it um her her father ordered uh the, the pure version of it and it comes in like a giant like coffee mug yeah and he's like let me get the let me get the pure version the unsweetened version and he gets it and then i look to my left and i look at him and he's putting like sugar packets in <laughs> what's the point of that but uh again it was uh it, it, it's different out there for sure and um i personally i'm biased but i think ours is ours is great the way we try to keep it as pure we don't try to blend it with anything else water banana or anything like that to get the change sugars so um I find it to be a great uh, acai. We have other options, but acai is my personal my personal favorite. And uh, we actually had a customer. She's uh, diabetic, and it's what she eats to control her sugar levels. So she will buy seven bowls, and she keeps in the freezer. She like skips all the granola and stuff like that. But it's what she eats to regulate her sugars which is incredible. I did not know that. Yeah. Is I mean, there... there's... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, Pat. sorry. Go ahead, Pat. Oh, um, I was just going to, I know, is there Pattaya bowl too? Is that another sort of uh, like, is it like a sister superfruit or within the, within the family? Yeah, Pattaya is the dragon fruit. It is a superfood too. Gotcha. But I think is... I'm <laughs> is that, is that something that's like natively grown over there too in Rio or is it from another area or? I don't think so. I think it's options. from the Caribbean or oh, okay. Costa Rica. Some Co yeah, yeah, there's a lot of farms in Costa Rica yeah. too where you could grow them. But there's so many different variations of it, right? I mean, you could have so many. The, the ones you see, like a lot of them, are like the pink and like the pretty version of it. You know, that's that again. But there's there's so many different types mm -hmm. of dragon fruit. Patrick, I wanted to ask you your your thoughts on acai. Like, what what's your your research and what have you found from the uh from the benefits of it um i mean it 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 sort of runs the gamut a big aspect to it because of i mean there are certain compounds that are in it and one of the big things regarding it is the pigmentation so you've got like you know uh like these isoflavo like these xanthocyanins you've got a all the different compounds that are mating, making up the, the pigmentation of a lot of those fruits are what are contributing to like the antioxidant, anti-inflammatory states. And there, there's a ton of other literature on the benefits of acai and world studies that I had researched for the little write-up that I did, the little the chapter, basically there were not many fruits that were up there. When you look at certain blackberries, blueberries, they didn't have the exact same qualities that acai, but it's those dark purple, dark blue fruits. And you're gonna find a variety of them around the world that th there's just something about them that you just can't you know, duplicate. That this is where, uh, if you've heard of, what's his name, Michael Pollan, you know, omnivores, uh, dilemma in defense of food. He's a big uh, author, investigative journalist, like food journalists and things like that. And he had this whole thing where he talked about to find that the cool thing would be as like you were saying, as close as you can get to that raw form, you know, the better off you are because you'll, you'll have like in the United States, you'll have, you know, an apple and then it's, Oh, well, we're going to break it down. Here are all the components. You know, an apple has fiber. It has this type of, you know, like su sucrose, the fruit sugar. Um, it has a variety of different things. We're going to break all those components down and then formulate them in a lab, you know, to try and yeah. duplicate the apple. And it's like, well, if you look at all the studies, you can do everything you want, but there's just something about what Mother Nature did with the apple that we can't define in our research labs. We can't define in our mass spectrometry where we break down every single chemical, you know, that's found in that food and things like that. But it ultimately was like literally one of the greatest foods that you could possibly consume like in your entire life. But I, I can send, actually send you um, uh, the, the write-up of the chapter and maybe you can use some of the, 
you know, some awesome. of the tidbits. Yeah, that'd be like fantastic. That. I was about to ask you that. You beat me to the punch. <laughs> it's funny sure. you say that though. Like when there's a lot of customers that come in who have never heard of it before. And I use that too. Is like the the closest thing I feel like they would know something that's plentiful here in the United States would be a blueberry, blackberry. It's the way I kind of explain it. It's close in that family, but better, right? So that's kind of where. Yeah, and it, it's I funny because it. yeah, it's funny because it it is in its own world because you know you have this giant hard uh, pit in the middle, and because there's actually not that much fruit, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like Evelyn, a tiny yeah. little hard food. So you, you you know, you have this this so it's very different from like a blueberry, but from the pigmentation, you know, that dark purpley blue like juice that would come out and stuff like that. But you know, so I, I've never had the experience of going down to Brazil or going anywhere and actually having like, you know, seeing it in, in person. So yeah, like it's just based on all the research, but yeah, I could show you videos of it being made right and especially close to the amazon and it takes a lot it takes a lot of those <laughs> the assay for just to make a bucket of it right so it's a it's a certainly a process remind me of like wine making the way they smash it too mm -hmm. with all the grapes it's interesting so what's fascinating you were mentioning earlier that this whole concept was sort of born out of necessity plato has a really good quote that says uh, necessity is the mother of invention so walk us through like what gave you the sort of the the i guess was there's probably a boredom aspect but is it just the need like why make it and then go and deliver it to people why I mean, offer it to other people because everyone makes smoothies everyone's going to read about acai and they're going to buy the powder on amazon yeah. and they're going to do it but why you're both sitting there now you're saying I'm going to make all this, but then why, why do the effort and bring it out to other people? Yeah. I mean, I, there is a necessity to it, right? It wasn't just pure boredom. I think, uh, there was an element of a desire to want to do this. Right. You know, and I feel like we're offering something that is, uh, that is a healthy treat, a healthy lunch. People are going to want this, right? At least that was the initial concept, right? There is other things internally about, you know, the both of us where we just feel we, we have a, call it a fire in us where we just have to be doing something. If I'm just sitting around, I'm going to go nuts. And like the fact that we had this business idea, like let's go execute on it. But I think through through time, right, there was a, what kept it going what made it more than just, uh, you know, let's just see if this works. We were giving, we were offering something to people that they enjoyed to, for them to say, like someone to come back, Oh, we, you know, we love this. Um, this is really good. Like, you know, my kids love this. It, it, it was enjoyable to find a purpose in actually helping people and give a product they enjoyed. Right. So sometimes when you sit back on the grind and and like it, it gets tough because you you get caught up in that same cycle of of owning a business and coming up with new ideas and filling the gaps and it it's it could be it's exhausting right it's tiring but those moments that you have when people enjoy it and that it they come back and they enjoy what you're offering them or their kids enjoy it. It fa we found a purpose in that and it kept going, it kept going. And, and like, I think that's what, that's what sort of inspires the drive, right. To keep it, to keep it going. You're solving a problem. You're growing. Not only are you helping people, but yourself, you're growing yourself as a person. And I think that's what the two things that keep us, keep us going. It's fun. It's a constant evolution. Having this business has changed me fully as a person. It was always on that path. Right. Especially within the last five, eight years to, to grow as an individual, but this just skyrocketed it. So I think there's, there's a selfish motivation, but then there's an external motivation too, that keeps us going. But, uh, go ahead, baby. You want to say something? And, um, as a Brazilian, um, uh, we show love through food and <laughs> that it's what, <laughs> makes it so great too and different from every other acai place around 
got a funny story on that. So <laughs> I had a customer come in and we make the bowls the same way, right? There, there's no difference, right? We, we have a system. Yep. Someone said to me, he's like, well, I, I kind of, I like it with, uh, when that girl with the curly hair makes it better. <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder why and I'm like, and I'm thinking that, you know what? It's probably made with, with love. I, yeah. I guess my bowl is not made with as much love, <laughs> <laughs> but hers are. I think so. Yeah. That's great. I love that. So I want to know a little more about like the hustle that went into it. So you guys started out in the apartment, you know, you took out a bunch of space to put all the tubs of acai in there. Like walk us through a brief overview, like how you scaled from that to where you're at now. And also like, I want to know, like, how'd you come up with your, your logo design? Like what went into that, the thought process, kind of what it stands for and like, where'd the name come from? So on and so forth. Oh, that's a hard one. Where do we start? How we came up with the logo, I guess. Or not. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can start you do like how we scaled, right? So like we uh we were looking for equipment one day, right? And I was looking through like just Facebook marketplace and uh down the street from us is a, a building called the atrium, a yeah. big commercial space. And they were a deli or something like that had went out of business. So I'm all right, let me go check it out. They had a few listings for equipment that we're going to need, prep tables, et cetera, right? So we go in there. They didn't even have a place at that point. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> just stuck it in the apartment. When was this? Just so we have a timeline, just because people know you now being successful. Uh, so I like to know the background. 2021. Yeah. yeah, 2021. Um. So I went in there and spoke to the person selling. It was the building manager. And through that, she said, hey, you know, I'm looking to rent this space out, but, you know, I just right now want to do like a pop up, right? Just a little pop up to rent the space out somewhere to like a ghost kitchen. Um, big, you know, open space. It had some freezers and fridge space. So I'm like, you know what? Let's uh, it's a good idea. I mean, she basically went in and said it's not going to cost you anything other than a deposit and you could rent this space out. So we're like, yeah, let, let's do it. So we had a couple of months. We went in there and did it for uh, probably summer, right? Like yeah, for, for about three months two, in the summer. Two, yeah. And less, um, yeah. It we went, got married at that time. We got married and went right back to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally the next day. And uh, yeah, we we put it together. And we're, uh, it was the first time having an experience with a store with the two of us. So it allowed us to learn all right, this is the systems we're going to implement. This is what equipment we're going to need. And it started to grow from there, right? And from that, we were reading a uh, article when we were in the store sometime in July, August, that a coffee shop in Yorktown just suddenly went out of business. And I was like looking for a place. So I'm, let me go check it out. And it was fully built out, cool little spot. Um, I started making phone calls to, I'm like, all right, this, this place was actually, no one even knew it went out of business yet. Right. It was just like a little write up an article. The, uh, I wound up calling the, uh, developer of the building and they're like, I'm like, yeah, this place just went out of business. And they're like, wait, what? They didn't even know. They didn't even know. <laughs> they just kind of snuck out overnight. So we called them up and they said, uh, through there, we met with the landlord and the landlord wanted to get somebody in there right away. It was fully built out. And I said, you know, let, like, let's go. We signed a lease, moved in. And then, then the business started from there and it's where we are now. Um, you just talk about the logo. I want to do the logo. The, the logo was interesting. Like, um, I met with a, a really good artist in peak skill. This is what his name is a graphic artist. And, uh, I saw some of his work and, and uh, I gave him some ideas, right? I mean, he's an artist, right? I don't want to be on top of him too much, but I gave him some ideas. I'm like, this is what I want. And he put a few, he put it together and, and he came up with this logo. I gave him like literally three ideas and he's like, all right, I'm going to put this together. He showed me a few concepts and stuff. And when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, this is it. It's just recognizable. It kind of, it, it was uh it was the yeah, one I, I was just like put in the mix fitness and jungle. Yeah, the so, colors. I kind of gave him the color scheme and he's like, I got you guys. And 
he came up with that. Nico wants to say hi to Uncle Ty. I love it. I love their dog, yeah. man. Oh, so cute. Yeah, he's the so unofficial mascot or official mascot. Oh <laughs> yeah, but that's where, so cool, though, go too, because like Patrick, you were saying how you saw a kettlebell, but then like for the longest time, and I've been working with them, we've been doing like car events and stuff together, and I, I thought the whole time it was the monkey, so I didn't even realize that there's a little kettlebell it's in the there, monkey. too. Like you said, it's the monkey, too, right? What about the name? Where'd the name come from? The name? Yeah. Name came up, and Ty could attest to this. And uh, so a bunch of us, a friend Joey interviewed Tyler, Tyler's friend. We went out, and uh, another buddy of ours, well, we went up, a buddy of ours went out to uh, the Poconos for a trip. And we went out there, and uh, this was right before my business started. We were we were coming up with ideas. And like I said, I was always being pushed by like Joe and other friends. So like, you got to do a business. You got to make this happen. And we went out there and we did a lot of mushrooms. We were sitting around a, a campfire and, and like something just hit me with like this motivation to do it. And I'm like, you know what, this is what I'm going to call it. Right. And I actually just wound up coming up with that name. It just imprinted in my brain. I'm like, let's let me just use this and run with it, right? And it just fit when I saw it with the logo. I'm like, this is it. This is what we're gonna wind up doing. <laughs> Primal bowls, yeah. And it's kind of wild because a lot of what you talked about had to do with you try to you, you you don't try you try to not dilute it as much as possible. So you know that that primal like rawness of it, where you're trying to essentially deliver you know, the Amazon fruit to the, the customer and things like that. I mean, I think it's yeah. a fantastic name, but. It was just perfect. Cause like we're in the woods. I'm like, it, it felt like we're back to like our roots, right? Like as humans, I'm mm -hmm. like, this is what I'm going to call it. This is the name I'm going to do. It's going to call primal bowls and stuck with it. And you know, now we're here. That's awesome. Now what it's kind of crazy because uh, I mean, I'll read a lot about, luck and you read about stuff and it's you look at all these famous quotes and famous people and you know the idea is is people tend to be a lot more lucky the harder that they work you know that the more they look for it and the more that you know it will bestow itself upon them so it's like you just had all someone from the outside might look at your everything that happened and say my gosh you just got so lucky you had that place on the corner that had the equipment you didn't have to pay that much rent and then you find this other place and then it just transitioned in there. And it's like, I've read enough, I've experienced enough to know that, you know, obviously there's just general random luck, but that, that wasn't luck. It was you like grinding every day, looking for opportunities, putting yourself reaching, in putting your, yeah, them. putting yourself yeah. in spots, reaching out, networking with people, making those calls, you know, and things like that. And it's like luck, you know, fortune favors the bold, fortune favors the brave and things like yeah. that. So, so kudos for that. Yeah, hundred percent. I've often thought about that, you know, cause I think all of us have experienced a, a certain sense of imposter, imposter syndrome, right? And that, that hits me at times where I'm like, God, oh, did he just get lucky? But you know, like you, like you just said, it's like, no, if you didn't put yourself in these positions, it yep. never would have happened. No, you know, it's like sense. there is, there is an end. Like we were in a, we're in a pursuit, right? Valued mm -hmm. pursuit right there. We were on that journey. Right. And then these opportunities presented themselves and we just, we just executed on them. The right? hundred hours goes unseen by many. <laughs> Always. Right. You know, a lot of people see that, right. It's like, you'll, you'll, see people oh wow look how lucky he is how much money he has like all these people that worked hard and created and cultivated these amazing businesses but you don't see the the 10 years of of hard work and hours struggle and, and, and like failures and and it and successes right and then failures again you don't see that a lot of people don't see that perception right so yeah it was definitely a uh it was definitely a learning experience for sure so That's why like the whole like quantum physics thing is so powerful too. Like your vibrational intentions are like what, like you manifest the whole concept, right? Things come to you, but you guys, you know, you put your, 
like intentions and like work out there and you know things come your way and when you're ready for the opportunity it's not like you get lucky i think it's more things just present themselves to you constantly and you're ready to you gotta like, be ready pursue to them yeah. and grab onto them yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah i believe in that too especially when you operate and like raise your raise that vibration right and you operate on that plane more of that is going to attract to you and there's times where i drop off that vibration i notice like more call them negative things start attracting to me is as long as you find a way to get back to baseline is kind of where I try to operate. And I'm always trying to uh, raise that baseline. Right. And the more I do things like this, the more opportunities that we have together that we, you know, that create, we're struggling, right. We have, we have a struggle, but it's a struggle for the a net positive and, and just a good thing. And I feel like as we've done that, we've just grown as people and we've raised that that baseline and that that vibration level each time yeah and i think i think i was i was talking to my wife yesterday i was talking about something and it's like you'll sometimes hear the word standard and it's like you set a that vibrational level that threshold is a standard that you both set for yourselves yeah. you know and then you just kept trying to you know improve upon it and improve upon it and there's something uh this guy jim Rohn that i follow says and he says success is not something that you become Success is something that you attract by your personal philosophy, by the person you have become, by your daily actions and things like that. So right. part, part of what we talk about uh, on Valued Pursuit is like pursuing a better version of yourself. So on that note, it's we saw where you started from. We, you then, you know, did the daily grind and you are where you are today. What 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 are you looking forward to tomorrow? Well, what, today, what are you working on today to set you up for tomorrow? Yeah. And it's funny, like when you mentioned Jim Rohn, like, and he was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was like Tony Robbins mentor, right? Yes. Wasn't he? Yeah. And I heard that through, like you said, raise your, raise your standards, right? And for a long time, at least where I am now, I'm trying to remove certain limiting thoughts on specifically around probably fear and and money are the biggest things right and uh Evelyn and I would talk about this a lot so both of our parents didn't come from didn't come from a lot of money right they're kind of you know in essence poor you know but upper you know lower middle class right and they raised up but they but what's interesting is they they've done well Right. At least, you know, my family's done well for themselves, but there's st what I find interesting is the thought pattern is still coming from a from scarcity. Right. So everything is expensive. Everything's this and that, even though they may have millions of dollars in their <laughs> savings account, there's a scarcity mindset. Right. So we're trying to remove I'm trying to remove that from my from my mindset because i still find myself coming through there and, and everyone as well to having more of an abundance mindset and i feel like the more abundant my mindset is i'm able to take more risks you know execute on what i want to what i want to do ultimately because i know at some point if i'm thinking from an abundance standpoint i'm not acting out of fear or scarcity so that's that's where i am now and i feel like it, personally that's only going to help me grow my business grow our brand grow our relationship you know it's it's coming from a place of abundance versus scarcity and through that like i raise my standard too so i try doing certain things like if i if i want something i'm just gonna do it i'm gonna go after it. i'll find a way to get it i'm not saying be completely reckless yeah. but you know if if i you know i i had to go to a trip uh in texas for work I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fly first class. That's what I want to do. I feel like I deserve it. I'm going to go and do it. And I did it, right? You know, what's the what's the big deal, right? For as but I was fighting that same plane of thought of like where now you don't belong here. You don't deserve that. You you're you're uh, you're in the back. You're a back of the bus kind of person. I'm like, no. Like and only flipping that mindset from patterns that were just developed for as a kid was it were, you know, only that was I was able to actually just execute it on that. I feel like if I stay on that journey, it's going to take me to where I want to go. 
so much, so much goodness right there. <laughs> Just trying to take it all in. No, I mean, I think like we, we always talk about that and I wanted to get into like what you guys like stand for on a daily basis. What are your, your mantras and rituals that keep you, you, you kind of talked a little bit about that, but like on track at baseline, because I think like you said so much of what is possible in life is like, we always talk about like the three to like five closest people around you, right? Like their beliefs, yeah. like their, their mindset, their biases, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> I think so much, like you said, like to get rid of the fear, because fear is false evidence appearing real, right, Patrick? Mm -hmm. Is your, you love yeah, that, uh, like that, that acronym. I love that. It's so powerful, but it's true because like this stuff doesn't even exist. It's like, you know, it's thoughts in our head that what if this happens, you know, what if it doesn't work out, so on and so forth, but those things aren't reality. What's reality is that like anything's possible. We talk about that all the time. We've been to the moon. Like we go to space, like, you know, we're creating all these like innovative ways of technology and, and medical science and, and what, where cars are nowadays and everything. Like just, it's all come from here. It's all organic from the earth. We've all created that as humans. So t tell us a little bit about like what you guys on a daily basis, what are your go-tos when you fall off a baseline? What helps you kind of get back on the rails and helps you kind of push forward and stay focused? All right. She's looking at me to, to answer. <laughs> to. I've been talking too much. <laughs> um, you know, ultimately, I think it's discipline to answer your question on that. I think it's just discipline in your in your rituals, right? I, I feel like um, definitely going to the gym, working out. We try to do it every morning, right? Um, staying on a consistent diet, avoiding certain element like again like alcohol things like that like i feel like when you do fall off it's so easy to go back to those old patterns so i feel like sticking to a, a discipline regimen because you're not going to feel good every day like i with both of us too like i enjoy the gym when i'm there but i hate getting up in the morning and going and doing it but if i go i feel better i'm setting myself up for the day I feel like discipline is is probably if I had to answer that in just one word, discipline is probably the way to do it and, and keeping consistent with that. How do you motivate each other when one person is, you know, and I see this with my wife all the time, it's we sort of build off of each other. And that's sort of, you know, that trust where, you know, if if Vince, you're you're having a down day, Evelyn, how do you then instill that discipline and get each other back on track i think what works for vin is like seeing me i don't even need to say anything or it's just like what i'm doing if i stick to my discipline he'll look at me as like oh wow like if she's doing this why am i not doing mm -hmm. it and as the man of the house, he's like, I got to like step up my game. Yeah. I'm and competitive. So I gotta, I'm like, I can't let her beat me in this. Alpha energy, right? Exactly. <laughs> Vince, and, you mentioned, uh, oh, go, go, go. Me being like looking for his leadership all the time makes him try to be the best version he can be. Yeah. And, the, you know, this may be. And I'll, I'll let you get to your point. I just want to make this point, Patrick, like this, this may be controversial in today's time. Right. But like, I do believe there are certain roles that need to be defined. Right. And this helps us with our business. It helps us in our relationship because ultimately it's one people say there's a separation. There's not, if you have a business together, right. And, and at marriage, it's your life no matter what talk about it grow with it. It, it it's it's part of us now it's a it's a it's a living being right so it, it's it, we have defined roles in our business and we have defined roles in our relationship right so like you know and evelyn is okay with that and i'm okay with that i think we have to live within like my role as a man and and coming from a masculine place and she lives within her role and coming from a feminine place. And it, it works for e each of us, right? Sometimes I need that cheerleader and that help from that, that loving energy. And sometimes she needs my 
let's go, let's drive, let's make this happen energy. And we try to mold that into one and keep those roles defined. Like um, it, it just helps. It helps in, in marriage. I would suggest it for everybody. And it helps within business too, because it keeps the lines of communication open. Right. Um, business is tough too, because we have employees and staff and if we're not on the same page and don't have the same message, it gets confu it gets confusion, confusing, excuse me. Sometimes egos get in the way, right? So we we try to keep defined roles and we stick to them. Yeah, and then you look at Eastern philosophy and you have the yin and the yang. And it's like, you know, part of that yes. is male and female. You have sort of those sometimes opposites. So you mentioned earlier relationships and you have then employees. So a big part of like pursuing a better version or a more valuable self, you know, self has to do with building and maintaining relationships. And we just kind of got into you two doing that for yourselves. How, how do you foster that with your employees? How do you foster that with your customers? Like to make Primal Bowls like a welcoming place that people want to revisit, not just for the delicious and healthy food, but for the, you know, for the healthy atmosphere and environment that, that you welcome them into. Yeah. And I could, and I agree. I think you said the yin and the yang, like I believe life, there's always polarities, right? Right. There always is. And there's that, there's the good versus evil, right? There, at the yin and the yang, there's always like a balance between both mm -hmm. the masculine and the feminine. So yeah, a hundred percent. And uh, I think both of our, our energies make it a welcoming place. Like I'll start with, I'll start with the employees, right? So most of our employees are kids, like they're high school kids. And my, what I enjoy about that is we can actually connect, we, we so connect how... with them and teach with them. We just try to give them some lessons within life to help them be better people. If I could get that out of them, no matter what they, what they wind up doing, um, that's, that's my, that's my goal with them. Like, obviously they got to work, right. But we're teaching them hard work. We're teaching them discipline, but we're, we're fully there for them. Like we support them They They carry our flag, man. Like I got to carry their flag in the battle, no matter what, no matter what happens. And they, they love us for it. You could tell like, we'll we'll show up at their dance recitals. We'll show up like, um, tragically I had an employee lose her father. We were there for her, you know, like, and they, you could tell like they, re they respect it and they love us they for appreciate. it and they appreciate it. And I think that's cool to see. I didn't have too many, I didn't have experiences like that as a kid, especially within jobs like that. So for me to do it and actually give back, it feels, it feels good yeah. for us. We do it together. And that to me on the employee side it is, it, it's an awesome part about it but it's the most difficult part about it too is managing people but that's the that's the one thing i could take away from it to say that it it's you know it's awesome because you are you are there for them specifically with kids right they're they're younger you can make somewhat of an impact on their lives and i enjoy that aspect but what do you think uh, about the uh the customers is uh same way we try to connect with them not like not treating them like just a number or a money yeah, transaction, right. Yeah, we do connect with them. Like we know their families, uh, what they're doing with their lives or where they're going to vacations. We see pictures of their vacations. So um it's try to connect people in the in a people level instead of just a money making level. Yeah, ultimately they're your they're your lifeblood, right? You're their customers. Exactly. So you're going to treat them like you're coming into our place. You're our family. You're going to make you feel welcome. Some people won't want it. Yeah, They're just... like, I want to be in and out. I don't care about anything else. But for the most part, we we just make friends. Yeah. Yeah, we treat everyone like that. I, I view like they're your customers, you're your family, no matter what, right? And, and, you know, they may be accepting of coming into that that vibe and they like this and they want to be a part of it, or they may just want to grab something and go either way is fine. We're going to treat them the same, no matter what. And that's kind of our ethos, if you will, when it comes to our client base. People don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel right. You live by that. Sounds like it. Man. Yep. A hundred percent. And, and yeah. how their bowl makes them feel. <laughs> <laughs> that too. We let the product sell itself. Yeah, go Tyler. You want to start to? Yeah, we're getting 
just to the end of this here. But um, wow, there's like so much to unpack in this episode. We really appreciate you guys coming on here and answering the questions that we have and really ultimately like for the value that you're able to provide to any any one person or multiple people that listen to this episode. And we've done 10. We're super proud of that. And we've had so many amazing people on. And happy to have you guys on for our 10th. So uh, thank you again for coming today and for chatting with us. Yeah, it was a, it was an honor, guys. We appreciate it. Do you guys yeah. want to put any kind of information real quick before Patrick says his thank yous for, for Primal Bulls? Anything we may have missed for the viewers listening that you know haven't visited you guys before? No, no, I think you guys covered it. Yeah, just um, check out our Instagram at, at Primal Bowls. Um, and we have a full, we have a great website too, primalbowls.com. Just, uh, yeah, check us out, come in, and uh, we'll give you a good experience. Yeah, and what else? A final, another final message. What do you want to leave? I mean, because we have them both on, and this is such a, such a treat to have you both, you know, on. What would you want, what message would you want to impart to the, you know, the younger versions of you that are out there in, you know, everyone listening or even the older versions, it's like, there's no, you know, wrong time to, to start a new way of life. Uh, what yeah. message would you want to give to others, you know, from an entrepreneurial ship standpoint, like to pursue their passions, to pursue things like that? What, what message do you want to give? That's away? yeah, that's a, it's a good question. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. There is an element of, yeah, just take action. But again, like I, I, I'm a firm believer in taking on struggle. Do something that's hard. Do something that's difficult. The outcome at the end is going to be fantastic, right? Like don't take the easy way out in certain things. Comfort is not your friend. It never will be. Uh, I would just say do something that's hard. Go after it, whatever it may be. That's my, that would be my advice to my younger self or anyone else in a similar situation because I think we're all kind of the same at the end of the day. We all have the same limitations and thoughts, right? So that's what, that would be my, that would be my advice. If I had to go slap around my teenage self, <laughs> just don't look for the easy way out all the time. Go, go do something hard. Dream big. Yeah. So what else, Evelyn, besides dream big and just do it? When you say just do it, how would you gear or guide someone? Just do what? How would you help them find out what it is that they should jump um, in and do? I think, first of all, you got to know yourself and know what you want to do and where you want to be in 5, 10, 20 years and stick to it, be disciplined, uh, work on yourself. Personal growth is big and you're not going to do anything if you don't grow within yourself. So that's the first, first step. Wow. know who you are where you want to be and work on it that's awesome yeah john maxwell has a line where he says you have to know yourself in order to grow yourself exactly and that's awesome tyler any final um no i i think we i mean we could keep going and going and going but i again i just want to say thanks for your time and thanks for the good conversation and um I think there's a lot on here that people can benefit from myself included and it's just a lot it, you know it gets gets us fired up and it's really cool to see what you guys are able to do together and we're looking forward to seeing what you guys do in the future so thank appreciate you for uh coming yeah. thanks for having us guys appreciate yeah, it's, it it's been an absolute pleasure and it's it's i think like tyler said i think it's going to be a wonderful example you know you can read a book and, and this one guy always says you can have sort of examples or warnings, you know, and, and I think you're, you're both in Primal Bowls and just you two as individuals are wonderful examples, you know, for us, for our audience to show that literally overnight, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be five years down the road, but overnight, you know, you can change your direction and, you know, by, by forcefully taking action and getting yourself, you know, to, to start to work towards your goal and dreams and stuff like that, that, you know, it can happen. So it's been an yeah. absolute pleasure. hundred percent. And like you said, like you hit it on the head. I had a recent, you know, just at the end on this note, but like you can always read something, a book, you can intellectualize it and say like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I understand that. But to you actually do it and live it, that's the only way I feel like you could truly learn what it means once you embody it. Right. So 
I, I, I agree with that fully. Awesome. Well, thanks so much to you both. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure, man. Take care, guys. You as well, guys. Thank you again. Thank you for being here and taking a step towards growth. As the saying goes, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. We look forward to sharing more expertise and content with you, and we want to hear from you about what topics you're interested in learning more about. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're enjoying this experience, please like, subscribe, and share with others who could benefit. Our goal is to grow this show and bring on more valuable guests to provide relevant content for your life. Thank you for joining us on this mission to spread knowledge and connect with people around the world. The Valued Pursuit podcast and content posted by Valued Pursuit is presented solely for general informational, educational, and entertainment purposes. The use of information on this podcast or materials link from this podcast or website are at the user's own risk. It is not intended as a substitute for the advice of a physician, medical, psychotherapist, or any other qualified professional diagnosis or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical or mental health condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such condition. You ever have a vision? Something you see play out before it happens? They say that the scariest thing in life is not growing into your potential not recognizing the person you were created to be. We are on a mission to help everyone on this planet chase that version of you, your most fulfilled self. Created here in the USA, Brian Van Co is now releasing their one-off hoodie in a full zip design, premium quality fitted to your physique to show you are chasing greatness in all aspects of life. Wear a garment that shows your potential evolving over a lifetime and become a part of a brand where humans connect to knock down the obstacles they face for endless refinement and continuous improvement.